Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you from the Storage View Lab. We've got a new NAS in for, uh, for review from Synology, which is uh, evident by the tamper-resistant peppermint tape. Let's go ahead and crank this guy open. Now you can see on the screen, we already know what we're dealing with. This is a uh, brand new two-bay NAS from them, the 720 Plus. And this has been a popular drive series or, or NAS series for Synology. I actually lived on a DS712 Plus for almost six years as my home uh, solution. And it just it goes to a, a test to the capabilities of the system over all those years. And the reason why I moved to a larger unit was not really because of anything else other than wanting to have the flexibility of more drive bays and uh, some of the newer technology like the SSD cache, uh, which at the time was not available on, uh, on the 712 Plus. So the, the 7 series is popular because you get all the DSM features, you get generally a little more power because it's a plus unit, and you get something like um, the eSATA port on the back for expansion, which lets you put another five drive uh, bays on very easily with the uh, Synology expansion chassis. What's new this time around too is that they've added the SSD cache in, uh, in this model. So we'll dig into it here in a second, but there are two uh, M.2 NVMe bays that are available. So let's go ahead and pop them open and see what we're dealing with. It should be the same look and feel more or less that we've always seen. Comes in a lovely little sock. That's to keep it warm in shipment. You don't normally worry about that a lot in the summertime like it is now, but if you ship these in, in uh, you know, December where it could get really chilly, you'd want to have it nice and cozy. So the sock is important for that. So we've got this, we've got a quick installation guide, a series of cables. It's got an external power brick and some screws and keys and other things we'll probably lose. So like others in the family, like I said, two bays on the front. They're uh, quick snap-in trays, which are nice. We'll be able to put anything uh, we want in there. We'll be using, since it's come bare, we'll be using our standard eight terabyte Toshiba NAS drives. They, they build, they're fast, they build fast, and they, uh, they've been super reliable for us. Uh, on the front, we've got our status, LED lights, power button, USB port. I actually like the USB port on the back, which this one has two in these two bay units to just sit a, uh, a little two and a half inch hard drive on top. Great for a local backup uh, to back up your data on this and you can go put it in a safe or, or something for security. Of course, DSM supports a number of cloud uh, backup initiatives too. We've got uh, two uh, gigabit ports, the aforementioned eSATA locking port. So the other thing though that I mentioned, I was taking a look on the inside there, there's a uh, a little RAM slot. It comes with two gigabytes of RAM, uh, but you can add another little four gig there on the bottom. So this is what's net new in this uh, particular enclosure is these guys, just like the larger um, Synology NASs that we've looked at recently, pop open and reveal the, uh, the M.2 NVMe slots. Now it's a little interesting to see NVMe caching drive slots available with only the two gigabit out ports. So we'll have to balance uh, kind of the way we think about that in a, in a two bay NAS. Maybe you use something real cost effective to, to put in there. Maybe one of those little teeny Optane drives that'll give you uh, a nice write buffer. And from a performance standpoint, Synology quotes this thing in terms of sequentials at about 225 read and a little less than 200 on write. Uh, that's for the hard drive uh, version. If we put in some SSD, we might be able to, to pump up those, uh, those rookie numbers a little bit. Um, but we'll go ahead and equip this. We'll, we'll put some hard drives in it, get it testing. Maybe if Kevin's feeling uh, adventurous, he'll put a uh, SSD in there and just get a feel for what the real capabilities are of this system with an SSD using just the gigabit LAN. So we'll go mess around with it, see what sort of results we get and be back to, to talk about that in more detail. All right, so after the uh, initial hardware overview video of the 720 Plus, we dropped in two 8 terabyte uh, Toshiba NAS hard drives. We really like those because they're fast and uh, uh, helps with rebuild times and 
when we're tearing up and down the labs, it's it's nice to have that. And it's a good comparison because we've used those a lot throughout NASA reviews. So I'm bringing in Kevin here now too, so we can talk about some of the performance results. And I talked about the hard drives, but you also use the two NVMe bays on the bottom of this guy. What did you slam in there? Yeah, so we decided to use the 118 uh, gig uh, Intel Optane 800Ps. And uh, those guys... Um, uh, depending on the capacity, it can be fairly affordable, but... Uh, so they drop down under 50 gig, don't they? They get pretty small. Yeah, and uh, you can, uh, since, based on Optane technology, they have uh, fairly good write endurance. So for a cash buy, it kind of makes sense. And so what are we seeing out of the gate then with the 4K results? We have a pretty clear view of uh, uh, the difference between a little bit of cash and no cash at all. Yeah, I mean, gigantic improvement in uh, performance. Uh, top end iSCSI goes from like 777 to uh, just under 55,000 IOPS for a 4K read, which I mean, you could say it's a pretty good bump. A little bit of a jump. Yeah. And this is one of those things that, that sometimes we struggle with, the concept of uh, performance versus felt performance. And I think you could argue that going from 777 to 50-some thousand is probably in the range of where somebody will perceive and feel that difference. Now, it depends on what you're using for. If it's just going to be a uh, NAS serving out uh, movie files, you might never feel that. That's a good point, too. But if it's in a uh, work environment and uh, you have a ton of work documents, shared PowerPoints, things right. like that, uh, files that start getting uh, access pretty quickly, that's where it can start making a difference. And that is a good point. Because this is the 720 plus, the, the 7 means it can support 7 hard drive bays, sort of in the parlance of Synology. So the 2 that you get in this unit, plus, uh, what is it, via ESAT on the back, you can connect yeah. their 5 bay uh, enclosure. So for orgs that want a performance-oriented device, but maybe don't have the budget or don't have the capacity need, can start with this guy you know, get a couple eight or 10 terabyte drives, whatever you want, mirror them in RAID 1, and then slam some cache in the bottom. And you've got a pretty capable uh, file share for and backup target for a small business, right? Yeah, and you have to remember with these uh, platforms, it's not just the NAS. It's uh, you can put on Docker containers. You can put on other apps and uh you have and you end up with internal workloads that uh, those themselves can uh, be pretty I.O. heavy. All right, so the latency picture tells the same thing, right? Yeah, so performance went significantly up and latency got driven down. And we this particular workload ends up being a little bit tough for uh, the platforms, just two hard drives uh, with a uh, 256 gig, or 256 equivalent uh, Q depth. Uh, it is fairly intensive, and that's where latencies uh, on the top end for CIS, for example, are 743 milliseconds and everything dropped down significantly with uh, cache. Now, it is worth noting that this does have two gigabit Ethernet ports on the back, and I believe you're using both of those in your testing. Yeah, so uh, the way we don't use lag. Uh, what we end up doing for iSCSI is we'll um, uh, have a uh, well, one line hitting uh, one port or two lines hitting uh, one port, and for SIF share, uh, have that set up for that IP address on different uh, subnet range. So it, it ends up forcing uh, traffic across both ports, but we don't have to worry about uh, lag uh, for different environments. And iSCSI, certain things don't um, uh, work well for single streams anyways for lag. Okay, so we just got done talking about how much of an impact flash makes on these hard drives, and now looking at 8K, it looks like it makes no difference at all. So... You know, this is an interesting chart. How, what do you attribute that to, and, and how should we th be thinking about NAS cache when it comes to different block sizes? So sequential workloads um, are end, end up able to get into the range where you start saturating bandwidth. If this uh, model had 10 gig on it, you probably uh, would start seeing more of the limitation of the hard drives themselves or the underlying flash. But around 28,000 IOPS, 29,000 IOPS, that's this... That's the sweet spot of like 220 or so uh, megabytes a second. So we're saturating both of the uh, LAN ports and it just can't go any higher. Now, I guess you could make the argument then of, hey, with Synology, why didn't you put a couple uh, 10G ports on this? And that's always the trade-off and and probably the consideration that they had is... Well, I mean, they kind of do. It's uh, This model doesn't have it, but they have like 
tens of models. So it's like if you <laughs> if you didn't want this specific variant, they have one that has the option you need. Or a PCIe card slot where you could put in whatever you want, including their new 10G cards or, yeah. or whatever. So yeah, there is flexibility. And I, I suppose the point is, is the 720 Plus, this is what you're going to get out of it in this block size. Um, if you need more, then a bigger unit is what you are after. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at uh, 7030 mix. What do we see in here? Yeah, so this is an area where uh, we barely broke over. I think it was 400 IOPS or so for uh, AK7030 mixed. And this is an AK uh, random workload. Uh, and with uh, cash enabled, we were just in our 26,000 IOPS or so across the board. So, I mean, gigantic difference in um, small block IO uh, throughput uh, versus just the hard drives. And for another picture at this, we, we look at latency and see that uh, the further right we go, the bigger the gap. Yeah, so load increases as you go further to the right, and uh, it barely looks like the uh, line is off the zero, but... Again, it's uh, with the cash in place, it's pretty quick. Yeah, I think these visuals are helpful for those that may not be storage experts, though, when they look at some of this data and say, okay, blue line much better. You know, yeah. throw a couple uh, a couple drives in it. It doesn't have to be Optane. Optane's just something we had around, and it's a good use case for those small capacity drives. But you would see big gains even with um, you know a, a more pedestrian M.2 yeah. drive. I would, so M.2 for this particular use case, this is an area where um, it made sense when Synology first started offering SSD cache onto a, a NAS platform where uh, you'd be able to have dramatically higher capacities with uh, hard drives than you would flash. But now flash is available, the commodity pricing up into the one and two terabyte range, you can still only use those two bays for cache onto an existing volume you can't it doesn't add into the capacity yeah that is the only downside but maybe that's something they resolve over time yeah last thing we look at are some big block read writes what do we see yes here? this is another area where uh, we're just capping out the uh the land throughput uh, for the two one gig interfaces um you're not really gonna see uh, much of a difference here uh i mean if you had multiple users hitting the same file and maybe some random activity hitting, you might see a benefit of cache there. But first, moving files on and off uh, the NAS, um, cache doesn't really help you there. And this is an area where, again, they're, uh, when you add in the read-write cache, they specifically have a feature to skip sequential traffic just in case you uh, don't need to interact with that. We have a turn on uh, to make our benchmarking easier, but there's certain use cases where you may be dumping all a lot of new files you want those picked up. Uh, that sequential traffic might turn into random traffic, but um, sequential is an area where, unless you're running uh, 10 gig, you might not really see a uh, benefit there. All right, so overall, 2-bay NAS, DS720+, plus. it uh, comes with, obviously, Synology's DSM, which is fantastic, uh, two-drive support, two M.2 NVMe caching drive support, pretty good performance, expansion uh, for five more drives, if you grow and need the capacity, uh, two gigabit ports on the back. The only thing is maybe someone might want a 10G port, but again, that that also changes the cost profile of this thing, which uh, uh, sits in probably at just uh, four or five hundred dollars bare. So, price pretty aggressively too, typically in in this family. So overall, it's a it's a great little NAS. We like it. It'll make uh, a lot of uh, small businesses or home lab types happy for sure. Um, and uh, that's the story. A thumb up or four thumbs up from us, I, I suppose, on this thing. Eh? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll be back soon with another video.